welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Sandhi in Paninian Grammar. Currently we are studying Hal Sandhi or Consonant Sandhi. Hal stands for a consonant and Hal Sandhi is the Sandhi that substitutes the Hal. We noted that Hal Sandhi can be classified broadly into two, Ekasthanika Ekadesha and Ekasthanika Dvyadesha. Ekasthanika Ekadesha means one substituent which is replaced by one substitute and Ekasthanika Dvyadesha means one substituent replaced by two substitutes. Ekasthanika Ekadesha is the type that we are studying right now where we study how one substituent is replaced by one substitute in the given environments. This Ekasthanika Ekadesha can be further classified into two Purva Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha and Para Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha. Purva Nimittaka states that the Nimitta is Purva and Para Nimittaka states that the Para is Nimitta is Para. So this Para Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha can be diagrammatically represented in the following manner where you have A plus B in close proximity in the Samhita mode and then in the environment of B in the Nimitta of B which is Para in this case A is Purva and so this A gets substituted by C. So this is Para Nimittaka Ekasthanika and Eka Adesha. So one substituent and one substitute. So A plus B is the input and C plus B would be the output. So far we have studied Shtutva Sandhi and Shtutva Sandhi as instances of this particular Para Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha. Shtutva Sandhi and Shtutva Sandhi also had a part which comes under Purva Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha as well. Now we continue studying the Para Nimittaka Ekasthanika Ekadesha and in this lecture we will concentrate on Anuswara Sandhi as well as Parasavarana Sandhi. These two are closely related and so we shall deal with them together. The Parasavarana Sandhi primarily which is related with Anuswara Sandhi will be dealt with in this particular lecture. The Sutra Torli which is also dealing with Parasavarana Sandhi will be dealt with later on as it primarily does not deal with Anuswara Sandhi. So the question is what is Anuswara? Anuswara is very important. In fact, people describing Sanskrit generally describe it by this feature Anuswarena Sanskritam. This is how popularly Sanskrit is described. What is Anuswara? This term Anuswara is used by Panini in his grammar the Ashtadhyayi and we shall see the sutra in which this term is used. But Panini has not explicitly defined what is an Anuswara. Panini has defined what is an Anunasika, a sound that is produced through the oral as well as the nasal cavity which is called Anunasika. And so the fifth letter of the class consonants namely ng, ny, n, n and m and the 
प्रत्याहार सूत्र यमंगण नम दे आर द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ अनोनासिकस बट रिमेंबर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अनुस्वार ओवर हियर एंड पानिनी हैज नॉट एक्सप्लिसिटली डिफाइंड वॉट इज एन अनुस्वार हावे वर द पाणिनीय शिक्षा एंड द लेटर पाणिनियन ग्रामॅटिकल ट्रेडिशन हॅज डिस्क्राईब द फीचर ऑफ अनुस्वार सो अनुस्वार इज अ साऊंड विच इज प्रोड्युस्ड ओनली थ्रू नेझल कॅव्हिटी नासिका अनुस्वार सो दिस साऊंड कॉरस्पॉन्ड्स विद द रिटन सिम्बल ऑफ अ डॉट ऑन टॉप ऑफ द लाईन अनुस्वार इज ऑल्सो डिस्क्राईब्ड ॲज वन ऑफ द अयोगवाह अयोगवाह साऊंड्स वी हॅव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अयोगवाह बिफोर अयोगवाह स्टँड्स फॉर द साऊंड्स विच आर ऑलवेज प्रोनाउन्स्ड टुगेदर विथ अ a stands for a vowel so those sounds which do not have an independent existence and which are always pronounced together with the vowel they are called ayoga vah and anuswar is one such sound the next question is what is parasavarna the word parasavarna is derived of two components para and savarna so parasya savarna parasavarna para is latter savarna is homogeneous so the sound which is homogeneous with the latter sound is parasavarna now what is savarna the sounds that have same place of articulation and the same internal effort of articulation they are called homogeneous with each other tulyasya prayatnam savarnam this is how savarna is defined there are two sutras stating the anuswar sandhi they are both stated in the asiddha section of the ashtadhyayi they are monuswara 8323 and nashchapadantasya jhali 8324 the parasavarna sandhi sutras are also two and are are also stated in the asiddha section of panini's grammar they are anuswarasya yai parasavarna 8458 and vapadantasya 8459 if we look at the number of these sutras the order in which they get applied also becomes clear the sutra stating the anuswara sandhi namely monuswara 8323 and nashchapadantasya jhali 8324 they apply first as is the meta linguistic arrangement in the asiddha section in the paninian grammar and so after the anuswara sandhi sutra applies then the parasavarna sandhi sutra applies if its conditions are fulfilled so there is this sequence that we must not ignore and after the parasavarna sandhi sutra is applied we cannot go back and apply the earlier sutras this is the principle of asiddha let us now study the sutras which describe the anuswara sandhi namely monuswara first 8323 this particular sutra has got two words two padas in it first one is maha which is 6/1 of ma and sixth case means in place of so maha means in place of ma sound ma anuswara is 1/1 of anuswara that is 
substitute the anuswar. The words continued from the previous sutras are 6 slash 1 of Pada, namely Padasya. This is continued from 8, 1, 16 and also Hali, 7 slash 1 of Hal. So, Hal is a consonant and Hali means immediately before a consonant. There is also a Paribhasha, Dhyena Vidhisthadantasya, which applies over here and because Maha and Padasya, both the words are in the same case that is 6 slash 1. So, they share the relationship of qualifier and qualified. So, Maha is the qualifier and Padasya is the qualified. And then this Maha is interpreted as Tadanta that is Manta an element which ends in ma. So, the meaning of monasvaraha after having put all these elements together would be the following. Immediately before a consonant, hali, at the end of a pada, padasya, yenavidhistadantasya, padantasya, ma is substituted, maha, by an anasvaraha. Anuswaraha. I repeat, immediately before a consonant, Hali, at the end of a Pada, Padasya, Yena Vidhistadantasya, so Padantasya, and Ma is substituted by an Anuswara. So, Maha Anuswaraha. So, what is a Pada? Pada is defined in Paninian grammar as Suptingantam Padam 1.4.14. What this means is Subanta and Tinganta, they are called Pada. So, Subanta is that element at the end of which appears a Sup. For example, Ramam, there is Sup that comes at the end of this element. So, Ramam is called Subanta. Similarly, Tingantam. So, at the end of which appears a thing is called Tinganta. For example, Apatam. Apatam is the imperfect past tense of the verbal root Pata. This is first person and singular. Apatam. So, Apatam is a tinganta, Ramam is a subanta, and ma appears at the end of these subantas and tingantas. And so now, if there is a hal that comes immediately after this ma, so if you have ma plus hal over here, if this is the situation, then 8.3.23 applies and converts the ma into an anuswara, the dot, dot on top of the line and hal remains as it is. Now, if you look at Suptingantam Padam, the sutra itself, you will notice that there is this Ningantam, there is this ma, which is followed by pa and therefore this ma becomes an anuswara by the application of this sutra. 8.3.23. So, this ma is the substituent and since it is followed by a hal or a consonant, it gets substituted by an anuswara. This is the meaning of monuswaraha. So, if we look at the pada in some more detail, we also note that there is one more definition of Pada. And the definition that is stated by 1417, Swadishva Sarvanamasthane, can be called an internal Pada. The Pada that we looked at in the previous slide, which was defined by Suptingantam Padam, 
is the external pada. The pada which is subanta or tinganta is fit to be used in the sentence. A sentence is made up of a subanta and tingantas. Whereas this pada stated by 1417 is strictly internal. So what this sutra means is the following. A pratipadika is called pada when it comes immediately before a set of suffixes. And this set begins with 412 and continues up to 54160 with the exception of the three, the first five stated in 412 and then the vowel beginning suffixes stated in this particular section 412 up to 54160 and also the suffixes in this particular section which begin with Y consonant. So a pratipadika is called pada when it comes immediately before this set of suffixes. Which set of suffixes? One, the set of suffixes that begins with 412 and continues up to 54160. And the exception is the first five suffixes stated in 412 plus the vowel beginning suffixes stated in this huge section plus the year consonant beginning suffixes stated in this huge section from 412 onwards up to 54160 the entire fourth chapter and the fifth chapter in the Ashtadhyayi. Here is an example. So if you have kim plus bhyam, so kim has got m at the end over here followed by bhyam. Now bhyam is a suffix that is stated in 412. It is not amongst the first five. It is not a vowel beginning. It is not beginning with y. And therefore now when bhyam follows this pratipadika kim gets the term pada by this particular sutra 1417. So kim is termed a pada with reference to the suffix bhyam. So this is an internal pada, internal pada. So ma coming at the end of a pada means ma coming at the end of a subanta pada or ma coming at the end of a tinganta pada and the examples are Ramam at the end of Subanta and Apatam at the end of a Tinganta. And similarly, Ma coming at the end of an internal Pada, which is primarily a Pratipadika like Kim in this particular example. So, all these Makaras coming at the end of the Padas, they are substituted by the Anuswara. Now let us look at the second explanation of Anuswara which is given by this sutra Nascha Padantasya Jhali. Now the key word in this particular sutra is Apadantasya. In the previous sutra it was Padasya or Padantasya which played a key role. Now in this particular sutra the sounds na and ma which appear not at the end of a pada, they also get substituted by an anuswara provided that they come immediately before jhal. In the previous sutra, the right hand side environment was hal and the substituent or the kari was just ma. In this case, in this sutra, now the right hand side environment gets reduced to jhal which is a subset of hal and jhal includes all consonants minus the fifth as well as yava, r and l. So let us study this sutra in detail now. This particular sutra has got four padas, 
first one is naha which is 6 slash 1 of n the consonant n and so naha means in place of sound n ch means and apadantasya is 6 slash 1 of apadanta which means not at the end of apad and of course jhali is there jhali means immediately before jhal jhali is 7 slash 1 of jhal which means immediately before jhal and jhal is a subset of hal so jhal means all consonants that is hal minus the fifth yamangana na and also y, v, r and l all consonants minus the antastha varanas the semi vowels yavara l and the anunasika varanas yamangana na all other consonants are termed jhal so when they follow n and then the words continued are maha from the previous sutra maha is 6 slash 1 of ma that is in place of and anuswaraha 1 slash 1 of anuswara after having put all these elements together the meaning of the sutra naschapadantasya jhali becomes clear and the meaning is immediately before a jhal and jhal is all consonants minus the fifth consonant of the class plus yavarl sounds na and also ma which appear not at the end of a pada are substituted by an anuswara i repeat immediately before a jhal sounds na and also sounds ma they both which appear not at the end of a pada they are substituted by an anuswara so immediately before a jhal that is jhali sounds na and ma naha and maha and ch which appear not at the end of a pada apadantasya are substituted by an anuswara anuswaraha this is the meaning of 8324 so to put it in the form of an equation we can say that if you have na or ma within a pada that means probably at the end of a pratipadika or probably at the end of some other element or in between some other element for example a verbal root so this na and or ma should come immediately before a jhal consonant and then this na or ma will be substituted by an anaswara with jhal continued to follow so na or ma plus jhal is the input and 8324 applies and anaswara plus jhal is the output now after having studied the sutras dealing with the anuswara namely monuswaraha with ma coming at the end of a pada and nashtapadantasya jhali dealing with na and ma both coming not at the end of a pada anuswara is the substitution now after these two sutras get applied and anuswara comes as a substitution we have the parasavarna which is a substitution that replaces the anuswara and it is stated by these two sutras now we will study study them one by one the first one is anuswarasya yai parasavarnaha 8458 this sutra has got three padas anuswarasya yai and parasavarnaha anuswarasya is 6 slash 1 of anuswara which means in place of anuswara yai is 7 slash 1 of yai and yai consists of all consonants minus h sh sh and s that is what is yai and of course parasavarnaha so this is 1 slash 1 of parasavarna which is a substitute so the sutra means immediately before yai 
that is all consonants minus h and sh and sh and s substitute an anaswara by a sound that is homogeneous of the latter which means yai so if you have for example if you have m coming at the end and followed by yai the sutra 8458 would apply and then the output generated would be parasavarna plus yai but parasavarna is specified as if you have m followed by yai then the output would be nasal parasavarna because we have to take into account the substituent which is an anaswara which is pronounced only through the nasal cavity and so the substitute should be such that it should also have the nasal feature in it and it should also be the savarna of yai so that's why the output would be nasal plus parasavarna plus yai so this would be the parasavarna of the anaswara now this rule takes the anaswara as input and generates nasal plus parasavarna as the output arrangement of rules is in accordance with the input and output scheme stated in this particular slide and so there are some peculiar forms like kurvanti which remain which are generated by paninian grammar where there is first of all the anaswara substitution taking place then in the sequence the sutra 841 tries to apply but there is no condition remaining and so it doesn't apply and then 8458 applies and after 8458 applies 841 cannot apply so even though we see na the sutra 841 does not see na and therefore here we don't have the natva substitution taking place and so we have the form kurvanti as is spoken by the community of speakers now the next sutra is vapadantasya this also explains the parasavarna this sutra vapadantasya has got two padas va and padantasya this is 8459 va means optionally and padantasya is 6/1 of padanta which means in place of the sound which appears at the end of a pad anuswarasya is continued from the previous sutra which is 6/1 of anuswara which means in place of an anuswara yai continues 7/1 of yai yai means all consonants minus h sh kh and s and also parasavarnah which continues parasavarnah is 1/1 of parasavarna so parasavarna is the substitute all these elements when put together the meaning of the sutra is generated and that meaning is the following immediately before yai that is all consonants minus h sh kh and s substitute an anuswara that appears at the end of a pad by a sound that is homogeneous of the latter that is yai and do this optionally i repeat immediately before yai yai substitute an anuswara anuswarasya that appears at the end of a pad padantasya by a sound that is homogeneous of the latter parasavarna optionally va so to put it in the form of an equation we can say that if this anuswara occurs at the end of this pad and followed by yai then 
8459 applies and generates the output first in the form of nasal plus parasavarana. Actually, this is also generated by 8458, but 8459 says that this will be generated optionally. What it means is that nasal plus parasavarana is one substitution and so the output generated is nasal plus parasavarana plus yai and optionally this will remain as it is. So you will have anaswara plus yai optionally. So there are two options that are possible as per this particular rule 8459 namely va padantasya. Let us throw a quick glance at the nasal parasavaranas of yai one by one. So if y is the substituent, the nasal parasavarana substitution of y is nasal y. V is the substituent and the nasal parasavarana substitution of V is nasal V. Similarly, L is the substituent and the nasal parasavarana substitution of L is L. Y is the substituent and is nasal parasavarana is Y. M is the substituent and the substitute is M. Similar is the case with N which is a substituent and the substitute is N. Then the substituent is N and the substitution is N. Then the substituent is N and the substitute is N. These five were nasals which these five were anunasikas and so their nasal parasavarana is the same. Then we have j, bh, gha, dha, dha, and the substitution would be its nasal parasavarana that is y of bh, m of gha, the nasal parasavarana would be ng, of dha, it would be na, and of dha, it would be na, the nasal of its own class. Similarly, the nasal parasavarana of j would be ya, b would be ma, g would be na, d would be na, and d would be na. This is jabagada d, the third consonant of the class. And the nasal parasavarana of them would be the fifth nasal consonant of each class. Then we have k whose nasal parasavarana is ng, then we have pha whose nasal parasavarana is m, then ch whose nasal parasavarana is y, th it's n, and for th it's n. This is khafa ch th th, the second consonant of the class. And then we have chatata kapa, ch as the first consonant of the class. So the nasal parasavarana of ch is y, of t is na, of t is na, of k is ng, and of p it is ma. This is yai, and these are the parasavaranas, which are nasal parasavaranas of yai. So these will be the substitutions. So when anuswara is followed by these yais, the anuswara will get substituted by these nasal parasavaranas. To summarize, in this lecture, we studied the concepts of anuswara as well as parasavarana. We also studied the sutras related to them, two sutras each. The sutras take na and ma as input and generate the anuswara as an output. Then another set of sutras takes this anuswara as an input and generates the parasavarana as an output. These sutras are arranged in sequence in Panini's grammar. Now we need to study the examples, the specific examples which explain these particular sutras and this we shall do in the next coming lecture. Thank you for your patience.